Union. It is the Katie Gerald Show. We've got a couple of special guests filling in tonight. Katie's on the road recruiting, so we're going to be talking with associate head coach Beth Kucher and also assistant coach Alex Guyton will join us later on in the show. Uh, we're on Facebook tonight on the Purdue Athletic site, so please let us know where you're watching and if you have a question or a comment for any of our coaches uh, that come in. And again, we'll have uh, Beth Kucher joining us right after this. It is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Extra pass to Petrie, and she responds with a triple. With the ball, Ellis to the basket, beats the buzzer to end the quarter. And it's a three-point Purdue lead after period number one. She catches it at half court. Abby Ellis, the wonder from down under, making things happen for the Boilers. Harnin left open and knocks it down. That is a three for Cassidy Harden. 11 turnovers in the half for Purdue, and Harper comes back the other way. Double team comes on Harper. Laid and left open, and she pays it off. Madison Layden. Had eight combined in the last two games. Extra pass to Harden. Back and forth we go at Mackey Arena. Then the ball movement from Purdue. Janae Terry gets a paint touch, skip pass out. Cassidy Harden. Now with 10. And now both teams with three players at least in double figures as Terry takes the reverse off the window. The drive was impressive, the screen even better. Waltman takes out not one, but just an aggressive. She's been getting to the basket. Terry out to Ellis. That's a three. Petrie playing with three fouls for Purdue. Ellis, floater goes. Ellis going on a 5-0 run by herself. Harper, and then finally, Abby Ellis gets to the basket. I mean, you've got... Ellis again. Yes! Gerald Show on 95.3 Bob FM. The Union, there I am. Uh, we're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Uh, joined tonight by Beth Kucher for the first a few segments. Beth, the associate head coach, we had her on uh, a little earlier this season. And before we get to basketball, we were just talking during the commercial break. I think we're both just about done with our holiday shopping. I finished my last one today. Yeah, my toughest was Katie, so I got that today. But I'm real fortunate. My sister does a lot for me in South Carolina. When I get home, she has it all wrapped and everything. So I'm going to, even when I'm retired, she's going to have to do that because I don't think I've wrapped a gift in 10 years. I, I, yeah, uh, and it's the hardest thing is when, when I have to buy for my spouse, and the, the present is for her. So I got to get one of my kids to come home and actually wrap the present. So that, you know, there are a lot of skills you learn in your life. That was not one that I ever picked up. So, well, that's good. You know, we have a lot of little time now between. Uh, basketball games, basically you're playing one game in an 18-day span, which is both good and bad. Good because you need some rest right now physically and mentally, but basketball players are also creatures of habit. And, and Jane Schott and I talked yesterday, you know, the best way for players to stay in shape is to play games. Yeah. There's really no substitute for that. No, there's really not. You know, that's the only thing. They're in exams right now, so if you get them out there and just get them up and down a little bit, that's about all you can do because mentally they're just really working hard. And, you know, you saw a little bit, a little bit about that yesterday in the game. You know, mentally we were we were thinking academics, you know. And, and, and going to Purdue, you got real academics. Mm -hmm. So, I, yeah, we just got to make sure we try to keep their legs under them. Like you said, we do need a rest, though. We're giving them two days off um, today and tomorrow and just let them do some studies and just rest. Uh, you mentioned then, uh, so today is uh, Monday, to, so you get them back on the floor then Wednesday uh, and, and let them uh, practice a little bit, and then what's the, what's the ramp up from there to the game next Wednesday? Yeah, so we talked a little bit about it. We're going to go probably Wednesday and Thursday, might take Friday or Saturday off, and then Sunday just start prep. Um, but right now, you know, when they come in right now, it's just going to be some individual work. I'm working with a couple of posts tomorrow. They just want to come in. I think it's a great time to get better individually, mm -hmm. get back in, get some shots up, work on things that maybe, you know, you felt like aren't going very well for you in the game right now. And, and just, again, just get in and get shots up, get in the weight room, do some things like that. 
you know, final exams at Purdue are tough on anybody, mm -hmm. but they're particularly tough for freshmen. You've got three on your team this year. And, you know, there are kids also that are making the adjustment of, of being bench players right now and trying to work their way into the rotation. So I'm sure that their heads are swimming a little bit this week. Yeah, you could tell. You could tell in practice on Saturday and shoot around Sunday that they're, you know, kind of their minds are other places. But, you know, our two freshmen, they really want to come in and get extra shots up. Like Lily's in the gym all the time. I told Addie this is a great week for her to get in there and get comfortable because she's a three-point shooter. And right now you can see she doesn't have a rhythm. And I just think it's a good week for them. So hopefully they'll call us, but we'll push them to get in the gym and get and get some confidence. That's where they're going to get confidence, in the gym. We'll go some one-on-one -on -one against our rip guys and, and get them some reps. Uh, the other thing, too, when you're, when you're talking about scheduling any practice at all, you've got a lot of kids with different final exam schedule. Have you got a couple of spots where you can get all of them on the floor at one time this week? Yeah, we do. Um, I think I think our, our practice is scheduled for maybe 1 o'clock on, on Wednesday, so that worked. And then I think 3.30. So it did work because, you know, as you know, now a lot of things are online. They don't, you know, they can yeah. do them at different times as long as they're done by the end of the exam times. So we can get them in there. And, and we're going to put some stuff in this week. I think it's a great week for us to work on us because we've been playing bang, bang, bang. So it's prep, prep, prep. But we need to get do, we need to, obviously, we need to help with some stuff and clean some things up. So that'll be great for this week. All right, let's talk a little basketball. And we'll start with the game against Maryland on Thursday night, which I thought was a you know, there are a lot of games that if you're not a fan of one team or another, are just great basketball games to watch. And, and that was a terrific game. Unfortunately, it did not have a happy ending. But you played toe-to-toe -to -toe with the team that then yesterday beat Connecticut on their home floor. Yeah, I know. I mean, when you see that, you're like, you see how close we are, you know, and how much we've improved. And I think when we play together as a team, we can beat anybody in the country. I really believe that. I, I think when we move the ball and we share the ball and defensively, our schemes are so good. Katie's such a good scout coach, you know, as far as taking away the other team's strengths. And I, I feel like that's what's really giving us the edge right now. And one of the fun things when you watch a team and, and watch Purdue play a team like Maryland is you know that they have great talent on the other team. And Diamond Miller probably going to be a WNBA player at some point. I thought you really frustrated her uh, early in the game. Now, she hit some big shots late, but you, you made her work for the points that she got. Yeah, we really wanted to congest, you know, and that was our thing is we were going to get in the gaps against her. We were really going to congest and make her shoot the jumper, shoot the three. And I, I agree with you. I think we really bothered her. She did hit some big shots, and that's what a player that's going to play in the WNBA is going to do. But I really – got to just applaud our players for just staying with the plan. And, and I think that's why we were in the game, honestly, because of defense. Offensively, we're going to get our points, but we got to stop a team like that that scores points too. You know, we talk about scoring translating from one level to the other. We've seen it here with Laisha Petrie, and you could see that with Maryland. Abby Myers was the Ivy League player of the year. They took her out of the starting lineup last Thursday, but she came off the bench and had a terrific game and then followed that with another great game yesterday against UConn. Yeah, she's talented. You know, she was better in person than when I was watching on tape, but she hit that big pull-up fadeaway jumper against us. That was huge, you know, late in the game, but she's just so talented. And now that you have the portal and everything, those players that want to come compete at the next level, Level, they get there and you can see they can compete you know just like last night with Il with Illinois State number 14 was a division two player mm -hmm. you know and she's just really good so yeah she she's done well and, and then she performed again like you said last night all right we're talking with associate head coach Beth Kucher we'll have more after this it is the Katie Gerald show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield Terry dives in, gets it up, and a beautiful kiss off the glass goes for Janae Terry. And diving to the inside, kicking it out, but taken away by the Boilermakers. Here's Ellis, one-on-one, -on -one, gets the Euro step and gets it to fall. Abby Ellis. I'd be very scared. As would I. Janae Terry takes it in and gets the athletic finish. Cassidy Harden with the shot fake, swings it to Ellis. Looking inside, but great defense. Laisha Petrie picks it up, difficult shot, and she sinks it from behind the backboard. Abby Ellis to Janae Terry. Terry to Petrie. Petrie's going to let it go, and she sinks it from deep. But she disrupts the ball. Wolden pulls it down for the rebound. Kicked over. Smith, feet set, lets it fly, and sinks it. Seconds, two, one. Smith turns, gets it up, and gets it to go. Jayla Smith, how do you like that? Outside, there's Bullman. Ball taken away, Cass Harden, running transition. Feeds Ellis, shot fake. Outside, Smith, feet set, and she sinks another. 
Purdue sprinting it back. Ava Learn down low, gets the finish and one. Excellent turn, finish, and she's going to the line for another. Three on three in transition. Petrie up and under and gets it to go. Late whistle is going to give her an and one opportunity. Some shots, you know, two or three feet from behind the arc. We know that she has range. I can hit those shots. Not when Ava learns like that right in her face, though. Abby Ellis able to corral that one in like a shortstop. Dives in and gets the bucket and the finish. And one opportunity for Abby Ellis. I do not know how she found that one. Abby Ellis. Memo, family-owned, women-owned, serving Greater Lafayette for over 33 years. Shuttles to and from Indianapolis and O'Hare Airports 365 days a year. Make your reservations now at LafayetteLimo.com. Lafayette Limo, proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. We're talking with associate head coach Beth Kutcher. By the way, this is our last show in the calendar year, 2022. Uh, we'll be back with another show on January 9th. We do have one more show coming up here at Walk-Ons, though, and that is next Thursday night at 6.05. We'll have a Citrus Bowl preview show talking about the Boilermakers' upcoming Citrus Bowl against LSU. So we'll... Uh, We'll see what happens uh, with that. Uh, the Boilermakers uh, getting ready to take on Texas A&M uh, here in a week and a couple of days. But first, let's recap the end of that Maryland game. And I heard Katie say something after the game yesterday. I really had a hard time believing. She said in all the time she has played and coached, she's never lost a game at the buzzer. Uh, I think you and I have been around a lot of basketball. We've seen a lot. I, I've seen and been around and been part of a lot of losses at the buzzer. That, that really is amazing to me. That is. When you said that, I've not heard her say that. But, goodness, I don't even want to think of the times we've lost at the buzzer when I was the coach or a player. <laughs> but we've won some, too. So, yeah, yeah it's, just, that's, it's so heartbreaking, you know, mm -hmm. because I felt like, you know, a couple things could have been different in that last possession. But still, you give zero sellers, you know, a three. That's kind of was our game plan. Not not in that mm -hmm. moment, but for the whole game, we were okay with her shooting contested threes. And you got to give her credit. She just knocked it down. You know, the scary thing with her, as I said at halftime, she had two points, and she's a player you know is capable of going off at any time. And unfortunately, she did. Her dad, Brad Sellers, a longtime NBA standout, so good genes there. And unfortunately, uh, you had a, a you know breakdown defensively where you, you had a couple fouls to give and didn't give those, and then you, your rotation was a little bit slow getting over, and you just had the feeling as soon as the ball left her hand, it was going to result in a bad thing for Purdue. Yeah, I felt like that too, you know, and and I, I really believe that in games you either win or you learn, and we you know you don't want to lose that, and I mean obviously we all probably every coach and player on in our program didn't sleep that night, but I think now it gives us an opportunity to learn in that situation, you know, and we can we can give you know some orders and some details in the timeout, but we got to practice them, mm -hmm. and we know that, so we'll clean that up. But at the end of the day, she did hit a big shot, and, you know, it was heartbreaking for us, but I think you have to leave there. We don't like moral victories, never will, but leave there knowing that we can compete. You know, a big part of us getting the next step is understanding that on the jersey we can compete with those teams right. like the Marylands, you know, and, and now in the recent years, Indiana, whether it's, you know, whoever it is, Florida State. So I think our girls are really starting to understand that and, and believing in each other. I have to believe it was a pretty somber mood in the locker room after. Talk about the couple of days after that as you got ready for Illinois State. Because, you know, it, that game was going to be a difficult game yesterday either way. Coming off a win over Maryland, you got to bring them back mm -hmm. down to earth. And then the way you lost on Thursday, you got to reinflate the air in the tire. Yeah, I mean, you saw the start of it. I think it was still the loss and, you know, the two days. And we had to bounce them right back. Katie's really good about, okay, we'll, we'll be all sad tonight. We'll think about this game, but tomorrow it's a new day. And, but it was hard because those girls really wanted to win, and they played hard enough, and they gave their heart and soul. And when that happens, it's hard just to bounce back. So we had to do a good job of coaches. We didn't do much on, on Friday. And then on Saturday we put the game plan in. But, you know, we had a slow start, and I just – I just kept telling Katie, let's stay with them, just stay with them. We just got to get through this game, you know. And it was funny because right after the game, I saw Abby Ellis, and I said, great job, Abby. And she said, Coach, three games in a week and exams. I said, you're right, and we won it, so let's just move on. Uh, I know Katie says that you need to move on, but I also know that Katie probably didn't sleep very much from about Thursday night until probably last night. Uh, she takes losses pretty hard. 
She yeah, hasn't that, had a lot of them at the college coaching level. No, she hasn't. And she does take them hard. I'm sure – and I, I can imagine, and you watched her as a player, how competitive she was. I got to see her from afar. But I got a lot of texts. You know, I've had a lot of texts for those few days until we won <laughs> last night, you know, and just, you know, asking questions. But that's what's great about Katie. You know, like, she's not going to just look at the players. She's going to look, what can I do? You know, what can I do to put them in better situations? And she always is looking at herself. And I think that's a sign of a great coach. All right, we're going to talk about the Illinois State game when we come back. It is the Katie. Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. away, Coleman football, and got it! Beasley rushes free for the Purdue touchdown! It's pandemonium, coach, hope for you! Hope we have a whole lot more of these. It's a great win for Purdue. For nearly a century, ross Aid Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful boys. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black. We'll endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about the Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. Good morning, Mr. Babinski. Oh, Babinski. That's fun to say. Babinski. 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 Purdue basketball, what's your favorite color? Purdue basketball. Coach Painter speaking. Function. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. And again, we're talking with associate head coach Beth Kutcher. We'll have uh, Alex Guyton on for the next few segments after this. But uh, let's recap a happier occasion, and that was yesterday's game against Illinois State. I have to say, if you were a connoisseur of great offensive basketball, the first half might have made you a little nauseous yesterday for both sides, because neither team could really get it going offensively. Yeah, and you know, we, we depend a lot on the three ball, and we were, what, 0 for 8 at halftime, I think, yeah. and when we shoot like that, it's tough, you know, it's going to be tough, especially the way they were really doubling and clogging it up in the paint so we couldn't get it into Caitlin or Ricky. You know, we really – they did a good job. Their game plan was not to allow that to happen, and that's what they do. So, yeah, when we couldn't loosen it up a little bit by hitting threes, we struggled. But, you know, again, you got to give the kids credit because they just stuck with it when things weren't going well because, you know, after the hype game on Thursday and you come in and things don't go well, well early, we could have had a different outcome. So yeah. really proud of them sticking with that. Yeah, we've seen games in the past where you weren't able to get back, and, and not just this staff, but in pre, you know in previous years where it, one loss becomes two, and yes. two losses become three, and so you got to keep that snowball from growing. And uh, I thought at halftime uh, the team came out a little bit differently in the third quarter and, and really finally then got the offense going in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I think the biggest message to them was, and, and at halftime, was we got to play together. You know, I think we all, you know, we start not hitting shots and everybody wants to take over. And that's a good thing, right? But we don't play well like that. We're better when we share the ball and we play together and on both ends. And we really appreciate that we do have the players that are so competitive. But at the end of the day, when we are really good, we're sharing the ball. And we did that in the second half, I thought. We ran our offense a little bit sharper. We had better spacing. And then in the fourth quarter, we really, I thought our offense started clicking. Again. Yeah, and if there was one word I think that really summed up that fourth quarter, I thought you attacked. I, I thought you started to drive the ball a little bit better, the basket. And the shots that you were getting from three-point range were more a re result of inside-outside rather than hunting shots on the perimeter. Absolutely. Um, I felt like early in the game we were attacking, we were getting too deep. And then they were just clogging. And then, of course, 
the word I don't want to say, the words I don't want to say here is we started turning the ball over because that's something we got to definitely work on. But, uh, yeah, I thought we started reading the defense a little bit better, and I thought the, the people that were away from the ball were moving so we could get them. But you're exactly right, Tim. We started attacking. The other thing you really liked about yesterday's game, you played eight different players, and every player on the floor scored at least five points. Nobody scored more than 14. Uh, that was Laisha, but Cassidy scored five, and then you had everybody else in between. A great balance and sharing the basketball yesterday. Yeah, I thought so, too. And then we had some sparks. You know, I thought Jayla had a really good second half, came in and hit a big three. You know, then you have Ava come in and always doing something, mm -hmm. gets a rim runner and one. So we needed some of those plays to get us going. And then you saw us getting a little excited, standing a little straighter up, you know, yeah. and ready to go. But, yeah, it's, it's nice when we have scoring like that because I think it's hard to scout us when we do that. Like, who are you going to stop? Who do you want to play? type thing. You know, Ricky Waltman has put up some big numbers here from a field goal percentage standpoint. I think in the last eight games, she's shooting somewhere between 80 and 85 percent from the field. She's getting good looks. So you'd like to see her get more looks. But again, that's an, that's everybody's job to try to get her the ball a little bit more inside. Yeah, I, I think she's done a great job for us, whether it's a big offensive board, whether it's a big shot, whether it's, you know, a great defensive stop. And she's come off the bench and accepted that role and is really helping us. And I do think this week is good for Ricky because we can get in there and get her some shots up because we do. We also are looking to put some plays in to get the ball inside. So I think it'll be a good week for Ricky as we go forward. You know, it wasn't a surprise yesterday to see Abby Ellis slide into that starting role and do well. She was a starter for a lot of her season last year, and, and she's been able to give you a spark off the bench. But again, it's amazing to me the shots that she can hit at five foot six, standing in between the trees. She's had to be play short basically her whole life. So this is something she's accustomed to, but she continues to make shots that make you go, wow. She does. Like sometimes she's in traffic and all of a sudden I see her get out and make some kind of scoop shot on the other side. And I'm like, well, how'd she do that? You know, but the best thing about Abby is you're going to get effort for every minute she's in practice, every minute she's in the game. She cuts hard. She plays hard. If she makes mistakes, it's never going to be a lack of effort. You know, Janae Terry is another player that's putting up numbers unlike anybody else in the country right now with in terms of points and rebounds and assists. I mean, she's third in the country right now in assists and one of the leading rebounders in the conference despite the fact that she's usually playing at the point guard position. Yeah, she's, she's really, um, her game's really exploded, I think, in different areas. But I think what she's doing the best job of, Tim, is when she gets in the paint this year, she's going to finish. Mm -hmm. You know, last year a lot of times she'd fade away all the time and she wouldn't get the shot off. Now she's getting and ones because she's so strong. Yeah. Yeah. You know, players can't stop her in there. But, you know, we just have to have her on the floor because if she's not scoring, she's helping other people score. And like you said, the rebounding's really been a plus for us. Well, Beth, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, we're going to let you go off now. And if you have any online shopping to do the rest of the show, you can do that. And you can watch your uh, your fellow assistant, uh, Alex Guyton, carry us the rest of the way. I definitely will stay here and watch Alex. She's my partner in crime all, right. all the time, so I'll be here, and thanks, and um, have a good Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays to you as well. We'll have more of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union after this on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Extra pass to Petrie, and she responds with a triple. With the ball. Ellis to the basket, beats the buzzer to end the quarter. And it's a three-point Purdue lead after period number one. She catches it at half court. Abby Ellis, the wonder from down under, making things happen for the Boilers. Harnan left open and knocks it down. That is a three for Cassidy Harden. 11 turnovers in the half for Purdue, and Harper comes back the other way. Double team comes on Harper. Laid and left open, and she pays it off. Madison Layden. Had eight combined in the last two games. Extra pass to Harden. Back and forth we go at Mackey Arena. Then the ball movement from Purdue. Janae Terry gets a paint touch, skip pass out. Cassidy Harden. Now with 10. And now both teams with three players at least in double figures as Terry takes the reverse off the window. The drive was impressive. The screen even better. Waltman takes out not one, but just an aggressive. She's been getting to the basket. Terry out to Ellis. That's a three. Petrie playing with three fouls for Purdue. 
Ellis, floater goes. Ellis going on a 5-0 run by herself. Harper, and then finally, Abby Ellis gets to the basket. I mean, you've got... again. Yes! The Katie Gerald Show on 95.3 Bob FM. Welcome back. Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. And again, we won't have another show here with basketball until January 9th. We do have a football show coming up next Thursday. Joined by assistant coach Alex Guyton. And uh, Alex, I'm looking at the Facebook comments, and Robin Guyton says, I hope I didn't miss Coach Guyton. Well, no, she's right here. She's sitting right next to us. Uh, hi, hello Mom. also to, uh, yeah, you need to say hi. <laughs> hi, Mom. Uh, John Hot in uh, Littlestown, Pennsylvania joining us. Lori from Remington, as always. Carol Ann watching tonight. And uh, Judah Carpenter and Kyle Wright, thank you for tuning in. And again, we'll be back here for the next Katie Gerald Show on January 9th. Uh, Alex Guyton uh, joining us. And uh, before we talk about this year's team, Alex, let's talk a little bit about your path here. You were a Boilermaker. Yes. Uh, even though you came from down south in the state, uh, you wound up at Purdue. What was it that drew you to West Lafayette in the first place? Honestly, it was the moment I stepped on campus. I remember it specifically. We were, I had just come from a visit leaving Notre Dame where I wasn't really impressed, loved Muffin to death, but didn't really like the school. And I remember pulling into the parking lot and as soon as we stepped out of the car and I was just like, wow. Like it hit me, like it felt right. And then we watched Purdue take on Ohio State and it was a packed stadium. Mm -hmm. It was a great game. And I remember leaving, le grinning ear to ear. My mom's like, what? And I was like, I really like it. I like it here a lot. And she's like, wow, the grandparents are not going to be happy. <laughs> I think I met with you on your official mm -hmm. visit. Mm -hmm. I've did. met with a lot of players yeah. over the years, but yeah. I'm pretty sure I met with you on your visit. Yeah, um, I just remember, like, just walking into Mackey Arena and just, like, the tradition, the culture, everything I bought into right away. Yeah. And that's what I tell recruits when they come on campus. It's a feeling. You'll know when you step on campus whether or not it's right for you. And then the basketball aspect, everything just fell into place. And then at the time, Sharon was at a – at all, IU, and then when she made the transformation or the move over to Purdue, it was just like the perfect fit, and I knew it was home for me. Uh, you played a lot of games here, 124 games played, which is still among the leaders in the program, and you played in three NCAA tournaments and one WNIT. Your freshman year, you go to the Elite Eight. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's got to be an eye-popping experience for a freshman in her first season of college basketball. Absolutely, and what I tell people all the time, like, it's short-lived because we spent the, la the next three years trying to get back there, and we never did. So you really have to capitalize when you have those opportunities to go. Um, but to be with the, the group that I was with to have that experience, I mean, it's still with me today, and it's, it's, it's a memorable experience nonetheless. And that Elite Eight game was in Oklahoma City mm -hmm. uh, playing against the Sooners, which basically was a home game for them, and they had the Paris Twins, yes. and they had about 15,000 people, and what a night that was. It, Purdue led that game at the half. Yep. What, what do you remember from that experience and maybe specifically from that game? Um, walking into the stadium and for the first time feeling like a real underdog. I mean, Purdue travels well everywhere we go, and we walked into that stadium. There was no black. No. It was all red. No. <laughs> and it was just like, whoa, like this is different. And then I, a specific story, I remember standing across the free throw line from uh, uh, Lindsay Wisdom Hilton, and she's like, Alex, you got to box out. And I was like, okay, okay, I'll box out. I went to go box out. Paris' sister just shoved me completely underneath the basket. <laughs> and Lindsay's looking at me like, Alex, box out. I was like, I tried. I tried. <laughs> but uh, just a memorable game and just a big-time experience that, you know, just is still with me today. Uh, then after your play, playing days were done here at Purdue, you did play overseas. We've mm -hmm. talked, and we're going to have a pro boiler segment coming up next. We've got, got a lot of players that are still playing professionally. Mm -hmm. You were in Germany? Yes. Uh, what was that experience like? Amazing. Um, I, that One of my goals was to play overseas basketball. I knew the WNBA probably wasn't the best route for me. Um, so to go over to Germany, never speaking the language, never really being out of the country, um, it was unique experience just because I was out of my comfort zone all the time. And then to play with uh, you know, young or young athletes that you know, some were professionals, some were you know still going to school, just different dynamics and cultures, and and to have that and to just be able to excel through it and go through some adversity because um, it was hard. It was really hard, 
Um, but I'm so happy I stuck with it and stayed true and, and was able to see the other side of it. Communication on the court is key. Did you all speak a common language on the court? Did you speak English or did you have yes. to learn another language? I, I, I learned some broken uh, German. Um, a lot of them did speak English. Um, it was maybe broken English, but the main concept was we wanted to be successful. We wanted to win. Um, and so it was most likely a head nod, a smile, or just like a do better, <laughs> something on those lines. But uh, And then my coach was Serbian. He didn't even speak German, so sometimes there was a, there there a misquote correlation there between the German players, but uh, nonetheless, it was, it was a great experience. I've experienced that do better shoulder shake a lot in my career, <laughs> yeah. Alex, so thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about your transformation then into coaching when we come back. It is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, and this is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Learfield. Terry dives in, gets it up, and a beautiful kiss off the glass goes for Janae Terry. And Diving to the inside, kicking it out, but taken away by the Boilermakers. Here's Ellis, one-on-one, -on -one, gets the Euro step and gets it to fall. Abby Ellis. I'd be very scared. As would I. Janae Terry takes it in and gets the athletic finish. Cassidy Harden with the shot fake, swings it to Ellis. Looking inside, but great defense. Laisha Petrie picks it up, difficult shot, and she sinks it from behind the backboard. Abby Ellis to Janae Terry. Terry to Petrie. Petrie's going to let it go, and she sinks it from deep. But she disrupts the ball. Wolden pulls it down for the rebound. Kicked over. Smith, feet set, lets it fly, and sinks it. Seconds, two, one. Smith turns, gets it up, and gets it to go. Jayla Smith, how do you like that? Outside, there's Bullman. Ball taken away, Cass Harden, running transition. Feeds Ellis, shot fake, outside Smith, feet set, and she sinks another. Purdue sprinting it back, Ava Learn down low, gets the finish, and one. Excellent turn, finish, and she's going to the line for another. Three on three in transition, Petrie up and under, and gets it to go. Late whistle is gonna give her an and one opportunity. Some shots, you know, two or three feet from behind the arc. We know that she has range. I can hit those shots. Not when Ava learns like that right in her face, though. Abby Ellis able to corral that one in like a shortstop. Dives in and gets the bucket and the finish. And one opportunity for Abby Ellis. I do not know how she found that one. Abby Ellis. Back to the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Time now for the Pro Boilers feature where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. We did not get an update this week from our friends in Europe, so we're going to update you on a coaching situation, and that is something you probably have already heard, but Stephanie White, uh, former Boilermaker All-American, is uh, going to be back in the WNBA this year. She's going to be coaching the Connecticut Sun. Uh, Stephanie's been in the pro game before. She was an assistant coach for four years with the Indiana Fever, including the year they won the championship in 2012. And then she spent two years as head coach, got her team back to the finals in 2015. Uh, she's also had uh, professional coaching experience as an assistant with the Chicago Sky. She was an assistant at Ball State, Kansas State, and Toledo before taking over the head reins at uh, Vanderbilt. She's continued to broadcast. Now she's going to go back to the Connecticut Sun, and so we wish Stephanie the best in her uh, assignment this year. Uh, so speaking of coaching, uh, you decide after one season in Germany that maybe it's time to try something different. How was your transition done then from playing to sitting on the bench and watching others play? <laughs> it's been an adjustment, especially uh, growing over the last couple years. Um, when I came back from overseas, I got right into high school basketball. Um, I started off at Warren Central. I worked there for a year, and then I went to Carmel High School and worked there for three seasons. And just to coach young student athletes, you learn a lot of it isn't X and is O's when you work with high school students. It's a lot of it is just learning how to motivate. And so when you learn how to motivate the young student athletes, you tell them how you much you care about them and you show them, and then you can start teaching the X's and O's. And so that really helped my growth, especially at the college level. 
Um, so after four years of high school, moving to Eastern Illinois and coaching at the college level, you learned how to interact with those student athletes and what what can help make them go to make them to help them grow as not only student athletes off the court but on the court as well. Now, when you were here at Purdue, did you think, hey, coaching is is something I want to do, or where, where did that bug come in? Um, a little bit. When we worked camps over the summer, I noticed that I was able, I had this unique connection with, with kids and that I actually enjoyed working with them and helping them grow and learn something that I, I loved so much. And then when I played overseas, we coached our younger development team and it kind of sparked the interest. Like maybe I'm kind of good at this. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's something I want to continue with considering I really don't have another plan. And it, I've been very blessed and, and very fortunate that it's helped me go this far. One of my favorite movie scenes is in the field of dreams when Moonlight Graham makes the, the walk from the baseball field into the, uh, the, the playing uh, the uh, spectator arena. And mm -hmm. basically he cannot be a baseball player anymore. Mm -hmm. There's a transition to being a coach after being a player because you have to have an entirely different mindset. You mm -hmm. go from being teammates and friends mm -hmm. to being more of teachers and counselors. How Absolutely. does that work? For you, how did it work for you? Um, it was it was a hard progression at first because you just want to be able to just explode and tell student athletes how, how, what you want them to do because you've done it before, it should be easy. And that's not the case. And everybody processes it differently and everybody learns differently. So you really have to learn the student athletes that you're working with and, and kind of how to correspond with them and how to teach within yourself, but also be able to have them understand and, and, and apply it. And I think that's the hardest part sometimes is that translation of teaching it and, and, and saying it in your verbiage and letting and, and getting it to them and having them apply it on the court. And I would think that being a Division One athlete, one of the tougher transitions, particularly in high school, mm -hmm. because you're not able to recruit at that level and, mm -hmm. and as you are in the college game, is, is you know what a, what, how a specific play needs to be done or a technique, mm -hmm. and you can teach that, but not every player has the physical capabilities of doing everything. Mm -hmm. So now you have to adjust to their capabilities Absolutely. and maximize what they have. Absolutely. It's honestly made me a better coach just because you, you have to work with what you got. You don't always have the best athletes. You don't always have the most talented and athletic kids. And so if you can put them in situations to be successful, to help your team be, be successful, uh, that's a major piece to it. Uh, the toughest thing to, to becoming a coach, what would you say, more, more on the mental side for you, uh, more on the motive. You talked about motivation being mm -hmm. such a uh, such an important part, but what what has been th th that you feel like you've overcome at this point? The toughest thing or the hardest thing for you to do? Um, probably just managing my time um, and having a balance. When you get into coaching, you can be very consumed, and especially at the high school level because it's nonstop. And then when you get to the elite level here, it's really nonstop as well with recruiting and traveling and things like that. It's finding a balance between work, life, and family, and and being able to help the girls with that as well because they're, they're juggling the same kind of things and if I'm not mentally fresh and ready to go that projects onto them so I have to make sure that you know I'm prepared and have my emotions and everything in check that way it better projects onto my student athletes. All right we're talking with assistant coach Alex Guyton we'll have more with Alex in just a couple of minutes it's the Katie Gerald show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. Wide open! Touchdown, Seth Morales! Holy Toledo! Thomas steps away, Coleman football! A great win for, Purdue. for nearly a century, Ross Aid Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old Golden Black will endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about the Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. Good morning, Mr. Babinski. Oh, Babinski. That's fun to say. Babinski. Babinski. Babinski.
Purdue basketball. What's your favorite color? Purdue basketball. Coach Painter speaking. You're listening to the Katie Gerald Show on 95.3 Bob FM. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. It's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Talking with assistant coach Alex Guyton, and she wants to talk about her post players. I thought your post players played pretty well yesterday. And let's start with Ricky Waltman, a player that I think made a huge jump from her freshman to her sophomore year and continues to get better now as as she goes along. Uh, R Ricky. Ricky, well, me and Beth will say, Ricky, Ricky's grown a lot, up a lot. And I think uh, what we forget is that she didn't play a lot of freshman year. She didn't play a lot of fresh her sophomore so, year. Yeah. So she's really growing in front of our eyes. And when I look at, you know, my transformation of being here and I didn't get a lot of experience my freshman year and kind of building your way up, once you get more experience on your belt, once you play more games, you just have an aura of confidence. And right now she's walking around with that confidence because she's been there before. And it's not new. And so she has a level of comfort, comfortability, which I think we're all seeing now. And she's really expanding her game and growing in front I, of us. I I think the other thing you can see with Ricky is she has adjusted to the physicality of the yes. college game. I thought her c first couple of years, you know, she got pushed around somewhat, and, and now she's doing the pushing. Yeah. And you like to see that. I love to see it. Um, just to see Ricky continue to blossom and, and grow into herself as, as an athlete and become the player that she wants to, to be, it definitely puts in perspective for me and, and, and all the coaches that, you know, why we do things and, and why we stay the course, for sure. You got a big spark yesterday from Ava Learn, and it seems like uh, Ava's always got a smile on her face and she always brings energy to the floor whether it's practice a game shoot around meals whatever Ava's always got the she's the life of the party sometimes she is she is she is lively I think both me and her our voices carry in practice and we're kind of those energy people that bring energy to the team and um, I don't think she realizes how infectious her, her her vibe so to speak is when she walks onto the court and she can just bring bring light to everybody that she encounters uh, Caitlin Harper is a player who came in uh, transferred in was a player of the year in her con conference and making the adjustment to Big Ten play. I know she's got a little bit of a gimpy ankle that's uh, hampered her a little bit the last week, but she's a player that has great versatility and I think can do big things in the conference play. Yes, um, we always say, you know, she was 6'4", man, she'd be a monster, but being, you know, six foot like she is, she still can dominate and her ability to carve out space in the post and shoot the three and her versatility, I mean, it definitely helps us out a lot and, you know, she's finding her way too, you know, coming from um, the school that she came from to coming to this level. She's really, she's starting to figure it out slowly but surely um, she had a good start to the beginning of the season and now that we've kind of hit some bigger athletes she's still trying to figure it out but she's coming a long way and it just takes a little bit of adjustment the unique ability she has those she can pull defenders 20 feet away from the basket because if they leave her unguarded at the three-point line she'll hit shots out there exactly and she, she's she's a sniper out there and to have her be able to stretch the floor helps us out tremendously then you got a young one in there lily stoddard at 6'4 again uh, an in-state player trying to find her way in the big 10 and it you know it's hard for a player that was a star in a high school team and is used to having the ball in her hands. Now she's trying to find her way into the rotation. Uh, Lily, for sure. Um, she, she definitely has the work ethic, though. She's always in the gym. She's always trying to do extra. She's always asking questions. And right now she's just trying to be a sponge and, and digest everything. She doesn't know whether that's going to accumulate in her playing in games or, or just being a star in the, in the, on the practice squad. But she's willing to do whatever it takes to make us better, which is what you need. And you've got some incoming talent. I know you're pretty excited to get your hands on next year in this yes, class. Yes, absolutely. That, that squad that's coming in, I mean, we've spent a lot of hours and time talking to them and recruiting them and getting them here. And so when they committed, it was like, yes, thank goodness, can we have you now? So as soon as they step on campus, it's, it's going to be a, a great addition to our squad. All right, we're talking with Alex Guyton. We'll have a final segment with Alex on the Katie Gerald Show. It's presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. And this is Boilermaker Basketball on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Learfield. Extra pass to Petrie, and she responds with a triple. With the ball, Ellis to the basket, beats the buzzer to end the quarter. And it's a three-point Purdue lead after period number one. She catches it at half court. Abby Ellis, the wonder from down under, making things happen for the Boilers. Harnin left open. And knocks it down. That is a three for Cassidy Harden. 11 turnovers in the half for Purdue, and Harper comes back the other way. Double team comes on Harper. 
Laid and left open. And she pays it off. Madison Layden. At eight combined in the last two games. Extra pass to Harden. Back and forth we go at Mackey Arena. Then the ball movement from Purdue. Janae Terry gets a paint touch. Skip pass out. Cassidy Harden. Now with ten. And now both teams with three players at least in double figures as Terry takes the reverse off the window. The drive was impressive. The screen even better. Waltman takes out not one, but just an aggressive. She's been getting to the basket. Terry out to Ellis. That's a three. Petrie playing with three fouls for Purdue. Ellis, floater goes. Ellis going on a 5-0 run by herself. Harper, and then finally, Abby Ellis gets to the basket. I mean, you've got... Ellis again. Yes! Gerald Show on 95.3 Bob FM. It's time for this week's game plan presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, home of the official credit union for Purdue fans. Learn more about their products and services at PurdueFed.com. Ordinarily, we talk X's and O's in this segment about the upcoming opponent, but you're not playing another team for nine days. Mm -hmm. As a player, uh, when you had a break like this, and you probably didn't have a whole lot where you play one game in 18 days, how do you stay sharp during this time? Um, a lot of it is just the mental side and getting in the gym. I mean, making sure you're getting your reps, getting your shots, and then just taking kind of the mental side of it. Because, you know, you really want to rest your body, but you also want to stay in shape as well. Um, it's it's a hard balance, um, but I think for our kids, especially this week, getting through finals, their headspace is really focused on that, as it should be. And then as we get later in the week, as they wrap up, they'll start to get back into it. As we start to get back into it, as Coach Kuchar mentioned earlier, just kind of get them in the gym, get them a little bit mentally more engaged day by day, and uh, hopefully we can, can still stay on the same path. I know players look forward to getting home to their mom's home cooking over the holiday break. So how do you get that home cooking off your body <laughs> in time for those Big Ten games that are coming up? Because you got a lot of them now yeah. after the after the holiday break. That's a, that's a tough part because we expect them to go home and eat. I know I'm going home to eat. Um, so we'll get them back the, uh, that next day, kind of progressing after Christmas and, and slowly kind of build them up a little bit, get them back in the weight room, kind of slowly get them into the progression, but mentally probably speed it up a little bit more for them. It's a fun time to be in the Purdue women's basketball program. Program, Alex, because you can feel the momentum building. I mean, a 9-2 and two record, and you're not that far away from being 11-0 and 0 right now, which mm -hmm. I think makes you a little bit hungry. The it fact is. that you have had a couple of games slip away, and now you got an opportunity here coming up to make some statement, have some statement games to play. Exactly. You know, we face some adversity in those two losses. We face some adversity in our wins, and it's only going to make us better going forward. And I, I mentioned this to KG the other day. You know, I'm glad we're do this is happening now instead of the next couple months, you know, because we're learning from this and we have time to grow from it. And the girls are bought into the process, and as long as they continue to buy in and, and, and keep rolling, we'll, we'll keep it going. Mom said you did pretty well tonight, I would agree. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, and happy holidays. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. All right, don't forget, we'll uh, be back here on January 9th for our next Katie Gerald show. That'll be at 710. We do have a show next Thursday night. It's the Citrus Bowl preview show coming up at 605, and we'll be right here at Walk-Ons for that. Wes Scott, our engineer tonight, our producer, Roger Forsyth, Video produced, as always, by Hunter Massengill. We thank him for, 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 for providing all the pictures on Facebook. Uh, we'll be back on the air next Wednesday, December 21st. I'll be down in College Station to bring you the Texas A&M-Purdue game that will tip off at 2 o'clock Eastern. For Beth Kuchar, for Alex Guyton, I'm Tim Newton. Thank you for joining us tonight. Happy holidays, everybody. We'll see you at Mackey on January 1st. Good night, everybody. <laughs>